be here today. I was really, really over the moon when Andrew asked me to share my story with you. Um, looking back at where, I, how I got to where I am today, it really started um, with the culmination of events when I went to university in 2007. So I'm going to start there. Um, I chose theatre studies and I went to Lancaster University. It was a subject I was always really, really passionate about and that's something I think is really important when you're going to choose something to do. Um, but even more important is that I decided to absolutely submerge myself in university life. Um, I travelled around a lot as a child so I decided that this was my chance to put my stamp on life and make a community of my own. So I got involved in absolutely anything and everything I possibly could. Um, that included things like um, co-founding societies. I co-founded the Student Television Society because I felt like I was really interested in TV as a potential avenue, but the society and the platform didn't exist. I had a two-hour sort of weekly radio show that I co-produced and presented. Um, I planned big events because I was the social secretary for things. I was the vice chair of my Freshers Week committee. So I literally got involved in anything and everything I possibly could. Um, and the main reasons were because I absolutely enjoyed it. I loved doing it and I loved getting to know people. And I found that surrounding myself with people who were really proactive and motivated, motivated and inspired me to do more. By my third year, I decided to be a little bit more strategic. I thought, you know, I don't quite know what it is I want to do. I'm doing theatre studies, for God's sake. I really have no idea what kind of job this is going to get me. Um, so I decided to yeah, do something a little bit more serious. Um, so I did things like internships, I worked for the Blackpool Arts Council and Library Service as a research consultant on a voluntary basis for a couple of months. Um, I designed projects working with young people who were at risk of NEET status, so not in employment educational training, which was really new for me and something I thought I could be potentially interested in. Um, I had a part-time job at the alumni office, so I was doing a lot of fundraising for the university as a charity as well. Um, and being an arts advisor for the Lancaster Institute of Contemporary Arts. The list goes on and I really, really did get involved in everything I possibly could. And um, I think what's important is, as well as doing all this extracurricular stuff, the, the course was really important to me and acad academic achievements quite important to me because my mum's always worked at university so I've always had that on a kind of pedestal. Um, so I, I tried to challenge myself whenever possible in that sense too. Um, my dissertation topic actually got rejected twice, they wouldn't let me do it. I thought, well I really want to explore this topic that I want to do um, and I really just pushed forward and I think it's because I believed in myself and pushed forward this theme. It got through and I got the highest mark out of all my peers that year, which was for me the biggest achievement I could have made. It was cited as being of a postgraduate standard and I was just over the moon with the result. Um, and I guess that's another example of just really believing in myself and pushing past that and taking a bit of a risk, um, but in a good way. Um, I graduated with a first class degree and was presented with the Lancaster Award, um, which they describe as sort of recognising an outstanding achievement in extracurricular activities. And that's my proudest achievement today. Um, after university, when I graduated, I went backpacking. Uh, it's a terrible picture when it's zoomed in, so sorry about that. Uh, it looked a lot better on my screen. Uh, but yeah, I went travelling with a friend for a month and just took time off. Didn't think about anything, didn't think about life, just took every day as it came. Um, but I knew that as soon as I came back, my life would be turned completely upside down and I'd have to actually decide what I wanted to do with life and find a job, which was quite a scary prospect. I'd heard all these horror stories from all of my friends back at home going, oh, it's impossible, you won't find anything, it's really hard, you're doomed. I thought, oh, great. You know? um, and, and actually, I found that they were right. It was awful. Um, it was four weeks in total that I was unemployed for on non job seekers allowance. Um, and I spent nine, ten hours a day just hard grafting on the internet, searching, on the phone, ringing people, amending my CV, doing applications. Uh, I just, I was just getting nowhere and I'd ring people sort of nearly in tears going, for God's sake, what do I need to do? Well, you know, I've worked so hard. It's just, you know, it was for me quite simple jobs. They weren't even what I wanted to do. They were kind of the step below. Um, so in that month I had 42 of these, 42 job rejections, which was soul destroying. Um, and that's when I decided, okay, 
the arts is no good. I'm going to just have to take something. I was really desperate. Um, and I got a relatively well-paid job in, well, they didn't call it sales, but it was. It was sales. It was hard, cold, immoral sales. Um, and I lasted two weeks. Um, I'm not a quitter. I've never been a quitter. And that's probably the only time I've ever really quit something in my life. It was when I found myself in the toilets, in a coffee break, crying my eyes out, on the loo, on the phone to my mum, going, oh, I need to get out of here, I hate it, um, that I realised that's enough, is enough. I just need to do something and think a bit differently about this and take a risk. Now, I was really lucky in that I could live at home and my parents could support me in a way. Um, so I know not everybody has that, has that sort of choice, but I decided to then, at the same time, I'd applied for something a few weeks ago and got a phone call for an interview same time at the end of the two weeks um, and it was at a place called Contact which is a theatre on Oxford Road. Uh, it was only a part-time job though, it was 20 hours a week and uh, it was on the box office and I'd done that on a voluntary basis at university in my first year and I felt like I was going backwards a bit and I thought it's got to be done um, and as soon as I stepped into that building, I'd never been there before, as soon as I stepped in um, for my interview I kind of, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. So I thought, oh, thank God, I'm somewhere creative. I'm somewhere where there was a DJing workshop happening in the foyer. I could see some artists. There were people laughing. I hadn't seen people laugh in ages. I hadn't laughed in what felt like ages. Um, and I thought, right, I need to get this job. So I went in for the interview, which went okay, you know, as well as it can go. Um, and I said goodbye. We shook hands and everything. And it's when I turned around to actually leave, I thought, no, I really need this job. And I turned back around and said, actually, can I say something? And they were sort of clearing up the water and things, ready to get on with their, their day. And they were like, okay, go for it. I had no idea what I wanted to say, but I just spoke at them for about five minutes. And it was, a, I think, a, just a from-the-heart passionate plea about how, how energised I felt being in that building and how much I actually had to give, <coughs> spurting off ideas just off the top of my head. Um, and it could have been a disaster, but actually it worked quite well. I got the job and they were really happy and they said it was that kind of plea at the end of this is what I'm about, forget all these questions and me talking about my experience, which I, you know, everybody's got the same level, this is what I'm about. So that was really fantastic. Um, now the job was part-time, I did a lot of volunteering alongside that at other arts festivals and venues to try and get some hands-on experience. But I think what was key is that I realised that in between selling tickets, there was loads of time. And most people, I won't name any names, were happy to start there, getting on with it on Facebook or whatever. Uh, and I found myself really, really bored. Um, so eventually, and it was a job share, so the guy who was doing it with me was equally as motivated. We pushed and pushed, and the job evolved to have some sort of marketing campaigns and things. So I learned a bit more about that. But I think the day I really got noticed was um, someone sent me, I don't know if it was by accident or what, but a, a draft copy of the season brochure. And I thought, oh great, is this to see what shows are on? No one asked me to do anything with it. Uh, but I decided to go through it and make some amends and changes and suggestions for, for what I thought would be making it for the better. Um, before I knew it, the list was as long as my arm. And I clicked send, head of marketing, copied in the artistic director, just made some changes, hope that's okay. Um, probably the most junior person in the food chain. Um, and to my shock, they were astounded, they loved it, and they said, this is absolutely brilliant, well done, we really loved it, and they actually made some of the changes, which was great. And then after that, another job came up, and they recommended that I apply for it. Um, and that job was as the Creative Services Coordinator. It was a completely new role around income generation, so I'd done quite a bit of that at uni. Um, recruiting artists, so I got a bit of managerial experience, which was great, um, and also I could make it my own. However, it was part-time, again, which was a bit of a problem. <coughs> and that's when I saw this fund called the Future Fires Fund, uh, which is basically a start-up fund to help young people who are looking to create something, a community arts project, working with other people in their local communities, doing something good, making some positive change. And that's when reintegration was born. And this project was all about finding and collecting stories from people who had at some point in their lives left and returned back to Manchester, very similar to myself because I travelled a lot. Um, and I found myself struggling a little bit to find my community again um, 
having just moved back and living in my parents' house. I just felt like I didn't really belong. So that was a fantastic project to do for a year. It was on a voluntary basis. And it was really tough, actually, at times, working essentially for free, putting in loads of hours. But some really good things came out of it. I got some great support from people like Virgin Trains and O2, financial support, having my travel sponsored, and I think that put me in a really good position um, for after this job. So this finished after about a year, which was March last year, and I'd also started to get itchy feet in my role at Contact. I loved the job, but now that it was developed and I'd done all the startup thing, it was kind of the same old, same old, just selling it. I thought, oh, you know, I love this place, they were my saviour but I'm ready for the next step. And that's when um, I went to my current role at Lowry. Um, the Lowry is a world-class venue for art and entertainment, but as well as that, and what many people don't know, is that they're a charity and their community and education program is truly life-changing for a lot of the people involved and it really inspired me. As soon as I did the research, I realized, and I just thought, again, I need to get this job. Um, so I read this job description and I realised that one of the things they wanted was a fundraising job, corporate fundraising, and they wanted someone to come with ideas. Um, so I did a strategy and I did a visual strategy. So I had this big mind map on coloured paper, which looked a bit from a distance like a three-year-old put it together. But if you looked a bit closer, there was content in there as well. And I took that along to my interview and I had the time of my life. We were chatting away about all these ideas and it was brilliant. The interview lasted about an hour and a half. And then I left thinking, oh God, I've just chatted away at them. I've probably, you know, God knows what they're going to think. But I had a great time. And it turns out so did they. They were really impressed, um, thankfully. And um, I got the job. So my job at the moment is to raise all the money um, to make all those amazing creative projects happen, um, which is hugely fulfilling for me. And it's also challenging because I'm working with um, some major businesses um, who I would never normally approach in my day-to-day -day life. It's innovative because it's different for the arts. Not many arts organisations are doing it quite right yet, especially not in the north. Um, so I'm learning something new every single day, which I absolutely love. Um, so that's where I'm up to now. And I think before you can look at the future, for me anyway, it's useful to look at the past. And I think, how have I got here? I've just given 100% whenever I possibly can and been proactive, surrounded myself with proactive people. I think that's really important. Um, people who motivated me, who I could then motivate in turn. Um, and yeah, just making sure that whatever I'm doing, I know that I'm 100% happy and feeling fulfilled. And I think as long as you or anyone or I carry on doing that, then that's all you can ask for. And I think the results will show themselves. That's my story. Thank you. Thank you.